Today we're going to learn about something that's really useful for probability and visualizing mathematically the probability and all of the possible outcomes of an experiment. And so these are called sample spaces. More usefully, you can tabulate the sample spaces to create a sample space diagram, which means it's just sample spaces but put into a table and all that, right? To give you an idea of what that means, I remember in primary school where me and my one friend, we were speculating about some of our classmates that could be girlfriend and boyfriend. And so we had, for instance, three girls that we thought were going to get boyfriends. This was girl number one. And this was girl number two. Let's say she had a bob cut. And this was girl number three who had a ponytail. And there were three guys and they kind of all looked the same because they had similar haircuts. I'm not really sure how to differentiate them. We were thinking about all the different combinations that these, these people could go through. And as you can see, I didn't really have much to do in primary school. So we thought about, you know, girl one could be with guy one, or she could be with guy two, or she could be with guy three. And girl two could be with guy one or guy two or guy three. Girl three could also be with all three guys. And, and that's when it got too much for us. And we just had a lot of difficulty trying to remember what all the combinations were. So we inevitably ended up making a sample space diagram. And I did not know that I was making one at that time. So let's take a look at this primary schooler diagram, the sample space diagram. We had a table and there were girls and then there was a column for boys. Okay, and then we could divide the girls into three, right? There were three girls, I told you. So one, two, three. So that was girl number one, girl number two with the bob cut, and then girl number three with the ponytail. There was boy number one, number two, and number three. And as I told you, they are all indistinguishable as stickmen because they all have similar hairstyles. Now, then we had all of these possibilities of... Um, each girl being with each guy and it was tabulated and it was perfect because we could tell exactly which one was possible to happen. As you can see, in every single little box thing, there was one combination of a possible girl-boy couple. And this one box, we call it a cell. So there were nine cells in total. You can see three times three is nine. So there were nine possibilities of couples. Now, but we were very, very obsessed, I guess you could say, with this one girl with the bob cut who was our friend. And we knew that this one girl with the bob cut had a crush on guy number three. So we wanted to see what is the probability that she's going to end up with guy number three. Now, girl with the bob cut with guy number three was this cell right here. So we were very interested in this. The probability of this happening is this divided by the total amount of probabilities that are possible. As I said, there are nine cells and there's only one probability that we're rooting for. So we're gonna say that the probability of this couple coming true was one out of nine. That's just a little bit more than 10% and it wasn't a percentage that we were very happy with. And we were right to be because none of them actually ended up dating each other, but nevertheless, it was a fun experiment and it was what gave me the opportunity to try out sample spice diagrams before I ever had to learn it in high school. So maybe now you have an, an, uh, an idea of what these sample spaces and sp sample size diagrams do. These are meant to help us with compound events. Compound events are when we're interested in the outcome of more than one thing at a time. So we're interested in the girls as well as the boys and therefore there are different combinations of girls and guys. One result of girl with one result of guy. So that's why we are interested in two outcomes in this case. We can arrange the outcomes in a sample space. So for example, you know, we could also say this is what the sample space for the kids in our class would look like. 
we had all of these two, all these outcomes, and we just arranged them in these brackets. Bob cut, comma, guy three. That's an outcome in which, you know, her dream comes true and she gets together with her crush. Another probability is dictated by the semicolon. It says Bob cut, comma, guy two. And then you can go on and on and on and list all of the nine pairings that we just looked at. I'm not going to do that, but you get my point. We can also do this for tossing two coins at the same time. So let's say you tossed two coins. For each coin, there are two possible outcomes. There's a head and a tail. And so we want to see what the probability is, for instance, to get two heads. Well, all the outcomes possible would be head for one, head for another, or head for one, tail for another, tail for one, head for another, or both tails. So these are the possible outcomes. You arrange them in this fashion and then you have to close it in with these brackets. And this makes it easy, for instance, to note that heads heads is one out of four. Minimum one head is actually one, two, three, three out of four, for instance. Now we can also combine them using a sample space diagram, aka a possibility space diagram. So we can look at this sample space diagram. Now we're not talking about coins anymore, we're talking about dice. Here, two dice are thrown and we represent the sum on this two-way table. So we're trying to find the sum of two points. Let's say you're playing a game and then that game requires you to throw two dice, add it together, and then move forward that many squares or something. Well, we can definitely fill this in. We know that dice Dice 1 has um, a probability of getting 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. Assume that it's fair. Dice 2 can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as well. So the sums would look like this. As you can see, I just added up every single possible outcome. There are many, many outcomes. Actually, there are 6 times 6 equals 36 cells. Now, you can see that there's also a pattern followed. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they're in the increasing pattern, right? And then we have, you know, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. Like, it does follow a very, very obvious pattern. This isn't always the case for every single cell, however. Now, all 36 cells are equally likely outcomes because the dice are fair. Now, then we want to get the probability that the sum would be 5. And we can see that there are many, many different 5s. There's one 5 here, one 5 here, one 5 here, and one 5 here. That's 4 in total. So that is actually, the probability is going to be 4 out of 9, uh, 4 out of 36, sorry. If we simplify that, then it's going to be 1 out of 9. So that is the probability. So you can see that rules can also change. For example, this time two dies are thrown, but the higher value is taken. So you're not doing some sort of addition subtraction, you're just taking the higher value. And this is also really easy to come up with. For instance, one, one, higher value, one, there's no higher value. One and two, higher value is two. One and three, higher value is three. So basically everything is higher than one, it makes sense. 1 and 2 higher values 2, 2 and 2 higher values 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. This is the complete sample space diagram. Now we want to get the probability that the higher number is 5. Now we're just going to circle every single 5 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 9 out of 36 cells which gives us 25 percent of happening so that's a very simple introduction to what sample spaces and sample space diagrams are you've probably maybe even used them in your life before maybe mentally or maybe in primary school just to think about all the different possibilities or pairings or all the different marks you could get for exams or anything like that we do use a lot of this in our daily lives and this is just kind of giving it professional names and officializing things so i think actually it's a very simple concept thank you so much for watching this video and i hope it helps and if you did enjoy it then do check out my other videos on statistics and a levels as well